Did you, did you get what you needed? Yes, I wanted a pan and I got pan. Quick, 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 quick. Also, I am very specific about the pans that I hate and the pans that I like. What pans do you hate? Like when somebody, like cheap ones or one, you know the ones with like that, like oct octagon? I don't that, like, like cheap pins. I don't like manly pins. I don't like oh. messy pins. <laughs> no, this is the best, it's, it's just like a pilot, paper mate pilot pan. It is like writing like with an angel in your hand. It's like, woo, it writes it for you. You think it and the pen just does it. It's like a Disney movie. Don't be trying to sneak in your paid advertisements that you get from uh, from this company. Don't be trying to weasel in. Hey, your do you know what else I love is barefoot wine. It just really is crisp <laughs> and good. <laughs> Thank you, BetterHelp, for sponsoring this video. Is there something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? I know for me, I get really stressed out with work sometimes. I get easily overwhelmed uh, when I have a lot to do, you know? BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating within 48 hours. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It is professional counseling done securely online. There's a broad range of expertise in BetterHelp's 15,000 plus counselors network, which may not be locally available in many areas. The service is available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your counselor. You get timely, thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions, and you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room as with traditional therapy. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Bob the Drag Queen. That's Better H-E-L-P and join the over 1 million people taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. Special offer to everyone watching Purse First Impressions. You get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash Bob the Drag Queen. Hi, everyone. If you're just joining us, my name is Bob the Drag Queen. And I am Thor G. Thor. And this is Purse First Impression. Now, we are trying something new. We keep adding a new thing each time. First time, it was just me and Thor G in a recording. Now, it's me and Thor G. We go on Riverside, and you can listen to us live on Riverside. And if you're a patron on my Patreon, there's a link on the Patreon for all tiers where you can actually watch me and Thorgy live in real time. There's a chat. It is popping off. We have 421 people in the uh, the, the the Riverside viewing party. That's and amazing. Then we have we have 346 people, so we we have um we have a, a roughly 900 people. Yeah, I was um, gonna say a thousand people so far that just joined in and we just started. Yeah, so yeah. get ready to stick out, stick it with us, have fun, and let's talk about this mother tucking episode. Okay, first of all, Woo! off the bat, Jan just went home. What you yeah. know, it's a weird thing that that um that that uh, Trinity said. My sister in my faith. I, that's been in my head. What does that mean? Like, did she mean like my sister in faith? Usually if someone's someone's sister in faith, that means like you're both of the same religion and you like worship together. What the hell does that mean? Sorry, back up. I missed the beginning of this. Jan said that when she left or something? Did I miss no, that? No, Trinity said, Trinity said it when she eliminated it. She goes, I chose she's so talented. Oh. Also, there, there, was a, there was a moment. I'm not saying this happened, but there was a moment when... Um, <laughs> When Trinity said, the girl I chose is incredibly talented, and Jan was like, fuck. Which insinuates that she doesn't think that Pandora about this I exactly It's definitely me. It was definitely she me. <laughs> she was like, the girl I chose is incredibly talented. God damn it, God damn it. Oh, no. That's me. That's definitely me. Oh, no. <laughs> and then she said, my sister in my faith, uh, and then she chose Jan's name and sent Jan home. Um, I mean, I think it. Was, I think it was time for her to go home. Also, in the end, so Trinity is going over to Pandora. And then, even after this, she's like, "Girl, I want to see you next week. I want to see you doing better." Like she cannot stop opening every yeah. every time she's like, "And and baby, I, if if I now that I saved you, you have to do." It's like teaching oh my God. the rules, the Trinity rules, and I'm like, okay, right. <laughs> It's very in RuPaul. Just last week was like, "Bitch, don't nobody want to be preached to." And she was, and Trinity's like, "Oh, so you mean preach more?" Got it. 
Although I have a lot to say. I watched this episode, I took notes, and I was like, RuPaul laughs at everything that Trinity says to a point where it made me uncomfortable. And I wondered how many drugs RuPaul was on to be laughing like that. <laughs> if you watch the episode, go rewatch it again and just wait for RuPaul. And you know RuPaul's like, ha, 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 laugh that he does. <laughs> that is a good, you know, that's a good RuPaul laugh. That was really oh, good. I've, li I've listened to it many, I'm like, what, how forced can this be? This was exponentially more crazy to watch. It was <laughs> uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm like, what? Nothing is funny. What drugs are you on? It was weird. Anyway. Okay, so now they're going around. We find out they're doing the Snatch Game of Love. Do you prefer Snatch Game of... I prefer regular Snatch Game over Snatch Game of Love. Yeah, what made it Snatch Game of Love? I don't understand. What was of love? All Stars. Like, now that it's on all... It's, 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 it's like uh, it's like the it's like the Bachelor... The, 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 what is it? It's a spoof on, like, the dating game. It's a parody of the dating game and they would like get you to connect to that person. I absolutely uh, agree with you. I prefer the regular Snatch Game because I wrote down many times, they we're gonna get to who they are, but they separate three queens and three queens. How they pick those three together, I don't know. But I think certain characters do like worse and don't look as funny or certain characters look yeah. better because they're paired with only three. If all six of them were together, it would give more characters to interact with each other. So it's kind of limited. I agree. And what I did they agree. pick him out of a hat, or were some producers like, mm, you know what? Ha 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 ha. Or maybe it was yeah, RuPaul. I mean, like, probably... How about these three together? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're probably producers picked. I should hope they're not leaving it up to chance. I would like, I like my shows produced for maximum enjoyment personally. So I don't mind a produced moment, but I will say, like, Give them a chance to interact with everyone because I think that maybe if some of the queens from the second group would have been in the group with the first two who were doing the they first was so good, exactly. you'd have more to volley off of. You know what I mean? But yes. anyway, that's not fun. Let's go through who everyone's doing. So Trinity K. Bonet decided that she is doing Whitney Houston. Houston, which by the way, as oh. soon as she said that, I, yeah, I was like, well, this is classic, classic. When you do somebody that you might look like when you perform in lip sync, it doesn't mm -hmm. usually translate to a good Snatch Game character because exactly she's amazing. But like, if you, what does she do that's funny? What does she? And it's it's kind of hard. So, whew. anyway, I mean, if you if you watch Whitney Houston and Bobby Brown's reality TV show, she actually did do a lot of really funny stuff. She well, that's when you go to like wild. the sweating and the drugs and the demise yeah. towards the end. But then it's and like, you, and you can't do the drugs and stuff on Drag Race, you know. Not really. You could fake it, but then it's like really just making Whitney Houston to be like a drug addict only. And I'm like, is exactly. that fair? Is it funny? But she, it's kind of sad. But she though. also like kind of had a slight disdain for uh, Mariah Carey. And have you seen the, the the documentary where she didn't where uh, she didn't like um, who's the person she didn't like? There was someone. Paul she Abdul. Like, towards the end, she didn't like anybody. No, there was this video of her. They're talking about Paul Abdul and Whitney, Whitney Houston. Like, well, she can't sing anyway. And imagine <laughs> like. Imagine being Paul Abdul and then I'm seeing <laughs> that video, being like like loving Whitney your whole life, and then you go on, you, then you're like, I gotta go watch the documentary because I love Whitney so much, and then you look up and you're like, what the fuck? And the she fuck is she this? steps forward one step back and was like, Whitney. <laughs> <laughs> She was uh, like, damn, that cold-hearted uh, snake. Um, <laughs> that was better. That was much better. That was much better. <laughs> All right. All right. But so, anyway, yeah, so, so she did Whitney, and I, and, I, and, I, and I did not think she was going to do a good job. And, and I'm talking about, if I, like, I feel like she did a, she did a bad job. She did a, she did a, she actively did a bad job. I would honestly say she was actually the worst out of everyone. In the same way that Pandora's depression defeats herself, it's the same mm -hmm. way that I watched Trinity go, well, I'm not good at this. Right away. Yeah. So then when she yeah, wasn't, I feel like it was her pass. And I'm like, no, because she really just sat there. She looked like Whitney Houston. And then she laughed at all of Ginger's jokes. You know what I mean? Like, I'm yeah, like, just, I'm like, girl, you might as well be in the audience, girl. <laughs> you tuned out. You didn't even try. You didn't even try. And I think she was like, well, I covered my tracks by saying that I'm not good at this which I think was really lovely. I do not think Trinity has a bad bone in her body. I think she's a lovely person. I think she's a good friend. She like hit my heart. Everything she said, like, does she ever talk crap or talk down about anybody? 
She is a good friend. I think she, her heart is in the right place. I don't think she has a mean bone in her body. I really like her. I wrote that many times throughout the episode. Like, I like this person. This is a good friend to have, but. Well, I cannot, I cannot vouch for, uh, I can't vouch for Trini like that, but she seems, she seems really lovely. I will say that. She's a good also, friend, like, but her Whitney Houston fucking sucks. <laughs> it was pretty bad. Let's go to Ginger. Ginger is doing Phyllis Diller. Ginger has Amazing. some really great singers, like some moments in there that are just so good, that are so funny. She has some really good moments in this episode. Like it I was, was just kind of like- For her to pick Phyllis Diller because Ginger is the one with the one-liners, just as Ginger made. Yeah. She is like, and burr, yeah. burr, burr, and it's always funny. And then Phyllis Diller, oh, yeah. it translated perfectly because it was her delivery. She never dropped character. She was like self-deprecating in the, on, on, with her, her body. She's like, I've been trying to close my legs since 1972. Yeah, and I was I like, agree. she used physical humor and she listened to all the other people that were next to her. And her group yes, was like- that's the important Phil part. Phyllis Diller, uh, oh, and of course, uh, Kylie, who did Dolly Parton, which we'll get to. But she really went back and forth. She listened. And between Dolly Parton and Phyllis Diller, they had more references about Whitney yes. Houston than Whitney Houston. So I don't Then know Whitney Houston like. did, true. And I will say, uh, my head's itching. I will say that uh, that her hair could have been a little wild because Phyllis Diller had some truly wild hair. White, and crazy. Her hair was, yeah. Like, just like, like Phil Spector almost. Like, it was wild hair. But... Outside of that, she really fucking nailed it. Let's go on to Kylie. Kylie Sonique Love as um, Dolly Parton. This is the, this is, it was from the top. She uh, she had all those great lines that uh, that, that uh, Dolly would say. Dolly yeah. comes with so many like great lines already for you in the canon. You can just release them one by one. I can look at the map, don't mean I'm gonna take a trip. But yeah. everything, she, the look was good. And I can, honestly, I was blown away at how fucking funny she was. And quick, that was the word I wrote down. I, I, did, I thought Kylie was gonna sit there and go, I'm gonna let my look speak for me. She did not do anything of the sort. She was there, she was present. Yep. You know, it was improv. I feel like this girl is, you say yes, you jump right in. And Ginger yes. would say a line and she goes, oh, what was the one joke that I was like, okay, this is clearly amazing. It was Ginger goes, I haven't seen my feet since 1972. And Dolly Parton goes, me either. With me neither, yeah. And I said, thank you. It was so quick. And I was like, Kylie, yes, 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 yes. yes. The but, only thing about Ginger making a joke about not seeing her feet, it felt like it was a fat joke. It was Which a is only joke. weird, but Phyllis Diller wasn't fat. I know, I thought that too, but she was Ginger like really this, so I think she used, I don't, Oh, I don't know. I was, tr yeah, I meant to look up pictures of Phyllis Diller because I couldn't. Phyllis Diller was very skinny, which I mean, I get it. I mean, I I, I get it. I get the idea. It didn't, it it didn't take me out too Yeah, but it just felt yeah. like a ginger men's joke being told while dressed as um, Phyllis Diller. Anyway. That sounded um, like so Michelle Visage's comment at me as, as Stevie Nicks. She goes, mm, I kind of feel like you're just Thorgy Thor dressed up as Stevie Nicks. And I said, I am Thorgy Thor dressed up as Stevie Nicks. <laughs> <laughs> but do you see what she's saying? She wanted you to embody Stevie Nicks, which is why you deserve to go home. Um, oh, don't on. you go. No, don't you dare. No, no. I wrote her off. I hate her. Blocked. Unfollow. <laughs> you blocked Stevie Nicks. Don't you block Stevie Don't you outside uh, Fleetwood <laughs> Mac? Michelle, I'm like, talking about hey, hey, oh, oh. Stevie Nicks has got to go. Hey, hey. I hate Michelle. I hate her. <laughs> So, so let's go to group two. So let's start with Eureka, who is divine. I think that Eureka <laughs> is doing like a decent, she's doing a decent job, but there's a point where I'm like, you're just- um, Too much? Not too much. It was a lot. Actually, I wrote, I actually wrote down, is Eureka doing too much? Because too I much. couldn't figure it out. You think it was too much? Uh, divine is too much. But like, yeah. there was something about, her physical attitude, I'm talking about, there's something about Eureka's physical attitude sitting there as divine that yeah. made her seem like she was somewhere else in her head. And I'm like, like, cause you know, I, I, the thing with divine, it wasn't her hand always on her hip and she was always doing this kind of shake. Well, she had a couple of things. I mean, she had a couple of different, I'm trying to uh, sift through these comments. Like she, had a, she had a couple of different, she had a, she had a lot of divine somewhere else. else. And it was, it was a lot, but um, I think she did Divine really well. She looked amazing. 
She was rude. She was disgusting. She was divine. Yeah, I think I think she did a pretty decent job at divine. I think that she could have grown. She did. That's what it is. I think what it is is she did not give the character an arc. It just came in and killed everyone. Condone cannibalism, and I was like, oh, when you when, well, when you it came in that so way, but I got movie, it. If you watch the movie, she didn't say it. To, she didn't say it toward the, till toward the end. She True. didn't start the movie off that way. Also, I really wanted her to mash dog shit in her face. Yeah, I can't believe she didn't do it. She mentioned Why it. Why did she eat dog it. shit? That would be funny. Eat dog shit four times. Yeah. <laughs> Have a little snack of dog shit. I mean, whatever. Right. But um, she. All, I was going to say, in her defense, she was doing the best she could with two uh, other people next to her that were not giving her a lot to bounce off of. That's what. I'll so say. let's go over. Let's go over to Pandora Box with Kim Cattrall. Now, Kim Cattrall is Woo! the slutty. Is the slutty one from um, Sex, Sex and the City. City. Samantha and Jones. It's, so it's, it's basically it's basically like Alaska's Mae West, but Alaska did a good job pacing the Mae West and finding the slutty jokes and making them work. Same yes. thing with Phyllis Diller also had a great way of making the slutty jokes and the self-deprecating jokes actually work. And yep. Pandora just really flopped. And I'm not, I mean, I, this is no surprise, spoiler, by the way. I, last week I was like, I can almost guarantee you Pandora's going home next week. So when she you went did. home this week, yep. I was like, I was like, yeah, of course she is. Like, I was not even remote. It, it, it was time. It was time. Yeah. And then uh, she yeah. did so poorly. I just like, also, I'm a Sex and the City, Sex and the City fanatic. I have watched that series 12 times through. Samantha Jones is always intense. Everything she says, you know, like she's awake. And she constantly yeah. is perverse, talking about nine inch cocks and, you know, oh, I banged him in the church. You know, it's really perverse. There wasn't one perverse joke ever. She was more of a Republican Fox News anchor <laughs> than a sex worker on sex. It was so conservative. Am I wrong? Like questions like this, and I know this is going to sound very inappropriate. I'm going to be canceled. I don't care. But like when they asked something about, do you want children, right? Wasn't that Fortune who asked that question? Yeah, do you want children? Yeah. I immediately thought like an answer from Samantha Jones was like, I love children because when they grow up, they turn into men with nine inch cocks. You know, like something like that. Well, I, like I would have said, she, a, what, what, what they should have said was, do you like children? She goes, of course I love children. I drank a full load of them this morning. Well, that see, that is like, the, see, that's too far. Or it would be Samantha. Wait, mine is like, too far? You just, mine is too far? <laughs> you, that was really inappropriate, canceled. Um, no, but or Samantha, Samantha Jones would have said, or Kim Cattrall would have said like, no, I hate, uh, no, I love children as long as they're locked in their cage. You know, it's like, she hates children. Yeah. She mentions it every episode. Get these children. And she, what did her, what did she say? Yes, I love children. And I'm like, <laughs> what? She was like, you know, she like, you know, honestly, I've been thinking about yeah. starting a family. Actually, I've been really considering what it would mean for motherhood, what, what motherhood would look like to me. And everyone's like, not, not Kim, not Samantha Jones. Last but not least, we're gonna roll over to um, Miss um, Raja, Latoya who's Jackson. doing Latoya Jackson. And I want to say, let me know what Raja is so good at, bitch. If you give Raja a fucking note in that workroom, she's she going listens. to apply it so fucking fiercely. Because I don't think that she was doing. Because when RuPaul just said, once RuPaul said, I like sushi, but I hate fish and rice, but she ran with that. And it actually was funny. She goes, I am, I am a fitness um, person, although I do not like working out. Like that every was, time oh, she oh, I that, like cats, although I'm highly allergic. <laughs> yeah, it was, that was so <laughs> smart. I don't think she knocked it out of the park, but I think she was solidly safe. Like I was gonna, solidly safe. You stole the words. I was like, didn't blow me away, but solid safe you're totally right and I was doing Michael Jackson and I got I got really good reviews from that people love my Michael Jackson but what tied it together even though when I was talking to you across the thing right it was always my <laughs> yeah because that was his awkward and every time Latroy, Latoya or uh, Raja told that joke she would end it with the <laughs> and it made it yeah. more funny it made it funnier and I'm like see that's somebody who knows what they're doing so solid say good job Raja so who do you think look the most like their celebrity? I'm torn between Trinity and Eureka. And Eureka. Trinity really looked like Whitney Houston. Eureka really looked like Divine. Eureka, hands down. Yeah, Eureka, yeah, Eureka really nailed the visual of being a celebrity. Yeah. Eureka has such, she is such a craftsman, isn't she? A craftswoman. Wow, you called her a man. Wow. Oh my cancel. God, cancel, cancel. <laughs> 
but like literally like just the craft eureka can just yeah, put makeup sure. and things on her body and i'm just like you are so yeah. large and in charge and artistic she really knows how to craft so well in and out like that divine it was amazing and then when she took off i don't think that taking off of that outfit at the end was necessary um but highly she, unnecessary but then I loved how she was so comfortable. See, I, I like always can depend on Eureka whenever she's on the screen. I'm like, she's gonna do fine. I like actually yeah. have so much confidence. I'm like, I'm never nervous for her. She's so like, she's just, she knows who she is. You know what I mean? Eureka's yeah. like, well, here we go. You know, and then can always no. talk. All right, so I was gonna say my other favorite thing that Eureka does. I'm such a Eureka fan, oh my God, I love her. Um, is back in the workroom when they when she always sits there and they're all like crickets and like they don't want to like fight with each other and Eureka is the first one to be like here's the thing baby I want to talk to you to your face like you said this but like you're giving me all the kinds of wrong vibes and I want to make sure you want to say it to my face if you really want to and I'm like I love that Eureka goes right for the throat and says yeah, Eureka's not, not afraid of confrontation yeah and I'm like work so anyway she looked great I think she was my favorite snatch game to be honest all right so now we're gonna go through these looks and talk about what the uh, the judges and all the contestants are wearing. Off the bat, can I just say that RuPaul's fucking dress looks so expensive. I wish it was a gown, just because I want to see even more of this insanely uh, expensive fabric. It is amazing. I literally wrote down three times, RuPaul looks amazing. And then later in my notes, I wrote, oh my fucking God, I cannot stop looking at RuPaul's face because when they cut back to the judging panel her makeup her face is so flawless i was like ew yeah. you look so good anyway she's amazing. 60. Amazing. I, know, I know i say it all the time people make fun of me for always saying if rupaul is fully 60 years old looking like this uh you know what it's like they say you're, you're not you're not you're not ugly you're just poor like this bitch looks phenomenal. <laughs> amazing, um, amazing. And everyone else looks good too. All right, let's go on to Ginger Minj. I like this look on Ginger Minj. I, I do wish that everyone hadn't gone with Andy Warhol. I wish there'd been some like Lichtenstein or, or or some um or some Basquiat or some Keith Haring. Cause there's wow, so much. you better uh, go with all of your references. <laughs> well, I mean, I think I feel like when you live in when you, I feel like when you live in New York City, you're just used to hearing all these these comments because. They're but all Keith Haring would have been nice, like a whole thing with like his famous yeah. with the, the dogs and the like the, right those big yeah things. The, the and the everyone baby went and, and the, you're right Andy Warhol was like everybody everyone did Warhol, it. which clearly that which is fine because Warhol is the most famous um, pop artist clearly Warhol. the most famous pop artist of all time, but some Basquiat or some you know I don't know something else would have been nice as well you know what I mean okay, but I like uh, this look. I actually I, thought it was kind of yeah, cool. She, I agree. She looks, I love the different color boots. I love the mod moment. I love, yeah. it looks good. I will say because she was the first one out, I was like, oh my God, faces. Oh my God, your face. And then I was like, oh, and also Raja, your face too. Oh, and Eureka, also your face. Oh, so Nick, also I wrote down they face. all went to the same designer. <laughs> Maybe maybe the thing was like use your own face because I'm like this is this is what they're all using literally their own faces. Let's go on to uh, Kylie. Um, okay. I, I like Kylie's look. It, Kylie's it, it seems like a different take on um, on this than everyone than everyone else. So I, I thought she looked good. I think it could have been a little bit a little more pop art. This kind of looks like RuPaul's ugly dress. Remember on the episode in season seven, ugly dress challenge. RuPaul wore that. Oh, dress what she with, wore. Oh, I don't remember yeah. that, but okay. I'm gonna have to go look at it, but um, okay. It was, yeah. it was she had, she had a, a white gown, afro, pretty she, had a, she had a velvet dress and a white afro, and she was painted on the front of the dress. Okay. And this yeah. was this, so. Yeah, it says in, it it, looks like, remember the other week we were looking and I said, if you took away the theme and you looked at this girl's dress, what do you think you would she be wearing? Oh, it was Raja when she was wearing the black uh, lace yes. thing. And it yes. was like, I yes. know, black lace, it wouldn't be gothic anything. And this, I would never know this was pop art, never. Up next, we have the remarkable uh, Eureka O'Hara. I will say Eureka's look does kind of seem like a more elevated version of Ginger's look. I, I was gonna say, if you put two of them together, I'm like, this one wins. And it's also, yeah, oh, sure. can we talk about when he goes, the purse first, baby, purse first, oh, yeah. baby. And I was like, Bob, yes. <laughs> Iconic queen. Iconic we're, queen. We still can't get away from that. <laughs> oh my god, third shut up. The wig looks amazing. the wig looks amazing. 
The purse is a, and now I'm going to talk. The purse is a little too big. This no, doesn't even I wanted it bigger when it came out. I said, yes. The my favorite thing about this look is that huge purse. She is a huge person. Eureka is not afraid of some like clowny prop. She wore an elephant on her head on one of the red carpets. You know what I mean? So when she came out with that, I was like triple the size. I thought it was amazing. It was my favorite part of this look. Don't you dare. Everyone in the everyone in the comment is just writing Y U G E huge. Huge purse. You everyone in the comment is just laughing at you. How you say how you say hey huge. Okay, this um, purse was a huge. Hey, <laughs> huge. <laughs> I think she looks. I, I do think she looks really good, though. I, I do agree that it would be cute if her hair had been the same on the dress on the thing. But like, I didn't even think about that until until Ross said something. You know, she looks amazing. Let's she go looks- on to Pandora Box. Ooh, this honestly kind of looks like your dress from the uh, Neon Challenge. Oh, don't even compare. No, 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 no. Also, uh, that was my <laughs> least favorite look looking back on season eight. But like, you know, I was trying to do like the 60s mod thing, but I always look mm. best when I have like a belt. You know what I mean? Like my silhouette, oh, cause I'm yeah. really long. It always looks better with a belt. And that was the only one I did where it was like a boxy shape. I don't know, I tried something different, like a little like, Modrion, you know what I mean? Like where I was like, oh, boxy sixties. Yeah. It didn't work. People didn't like it. I was like, whatever. Um, so this, this is this is not this is not uh, Warhol. This is this is a little bit more Lichtenstein. I think I'm saying it right. Um, with the, like the lines in the face and the teary kind of thing. Except she did it on her makeup. And this, I looks, mean, she looks, me, this looks good. Hard. I just cannot stop thinking about how much I hated her Kim Cattrall. <laughs> oh. I'm surprised you didn't say anything about how white her face is. You hate when people paint their faces too white. She's pretty white it's here. pale, too much pale, just white, 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 white. And I'm like, wah! And then look at her, let her look at her tan tights, right? It's like, it's too, it's too much. Yeah, it's right? true. Yeah, I see, you're right. I see, I see it. Yeah, it's, I did, it's, I did like this look though. I, the, 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 um, what, what do they call it? Onomatopoeia? Is that the right word? Yeah, onomatopoeia, like words that are, like, are, that are, pow, are sound. Box. Yeah. Bow, bow. Uh, and she used that, and I thought that was very pop art of her, like a like comic book. Yeah. And I agree. She doesn't look. She doesn't look bad. I just, I'm really, I was just really disappointed with the Kim, uh, Cattrall, and well, I couldn't. There, you're, I, you're being unclear. How did you feel about her, um, Kim, Kim Cattrall? I, you, when you've been really she did Kim it. Cattrall, <laughs> it wasn't good, and it was disappointing. <laughs> Isn't and it Kim Cattrall? I, when she did, now let me tell you right now, when Pandora Rocks did Kim Cattrall, I didn't laugh once. Wait, is it Cattrall or Cattrell? How do, you, how do you pronounce it? Cattrall or Cattrell? I think it's Kim Cattrall. I thought it was Kim Cattrell. Oh, or, no, it's I also A-L-L, don't watch that. Right? Uh, yeah, I, I've never watched uh, Sex and the City. So. Well, there's all this drama now because she decided not to opt in to the new, uh, and there it is, or what is it called? Oh, I heard about this. Yeah, she's Just not like doing, that? She's not, and just yeah, like that, and they're doing, filming. She's not doing the new Sex in the City, so they're just gonna. I hope they kill her off in the first season episode. That's what everyone's season, like. Great. They're like, are they gonna kill her off? Or I don't know. I'm really excited about it. It's gonna be fun. Um. Anyway. All right, let's go on to Raja O'Hara, who I gotta say, so Raja mentioned something today, and I think it might actually be part of what makes her really wonderful, what makes her not flourish as well. So here's the thing, Raja, um, makes every single thing she wears. But then I, I think the only thing is, and she's and she is incredibly talented. But the issue then is, you are limited to your skill set. So if yes. you are making everything, you can only make, you can only wear what you can make. She does look good, but this is not. I don't see this as a big pop art moment. This looks more like a like a, like a like a Fubu outfit. Back when Fubu did a collab, Fubu did a collaboration with um, Fat Albert. Um, back in like the late '90s, early 2000s, and it's kind of giving me that. Oh as my a vibe. god! What a good reference. Love it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it's is it, it, I I I don't see a pop art for this. You know, I thought the coat was when she turned around. I think the graphic on the back of the coat is amazingly done. I think the coat is cool. I think the look from head to toe is very cool. Again, if you take away and you ask what this theme is and you didn't know, I would never know it was pop art. I would say, is it fur? Is it words? <laughs> yeah, is it pa- you know? hand painted? You know? Yeah. So let's go on to the uh, our last look, which is Miss uh, Trinity K. Bonet, who 
Okay. And folks, at, this is the best look, hands down. Okay. I mean, one, let's just say two things. One, I love the blue. Political statement aside, this look is great. This look is great. I was going to say, even Bring if she wasn't holding the sign, I'm like head to toe, pop art. You would know right away. Yes. And then she's yes. like, also, here we go. And I'm like, you better yes. do that. <laughs> you better do yeah. all of that. Why not? Agreed. She is constantly showing these bitches why she deserves to yes. win this fucking chat. Even when she flounders on one part, she shows the fuck up in the next part. Yes. Every episode, she has shown you why she deserves to, if not win, be in like the top. She is killing it. Love it. Killing it. Head to toe. I love the boots. I love the cover of the boots, like the yellow and yeah. like just like the hybrid, what is it called? Like 3D comic book makeup that she did where she painted only one side of her face. I mean, she made herself look like a comic book character in pop art. It was amazing. I really loved it. I just loved it. I loved it. Loved it. Loved yeah. It. TKB eight on this one. So mm -hmm. let's talk about, okay, so we end up finding out that Ginger Minj wins the challenge. And I would say rightfully so. Ginger fully deserved this win. 100%. She was amazing. She's a good improv artist. She's amazing. She was yep. funny. Great. Perfect win. So, and we found out the bottom two are Trinity and Pandora bots, which I think also makes sense. But also at this point, I'm wondering, like, I'm trying to think. Because I would say her look was good, but her snatch game was horrible. And the snatch game pulled the look down to me. Which one? Trinity. Okay, yeah. Yeah, like it it really dragged her whole thing. It was it was I wouldn't even have thought she was as bad if she didn't make an excuse beforehand and then she was just like, eh. Like it just seemed lazy in a way like eh, this is how i get away with not even trying and i'm like well, you gotta you gotta try and also yeah. it, have we not been proven over and over again that girls that sometimes were like oh she's gonna bomb this if they actually just do the effort sometimes they are the fucking funniest ones you never know yeah. all of a sudden and i'm like you didn't even try so it's just a little disappointing to watch her in the edit as well i don't really know what transpired there live uh, when they were filming, but during the edit, I watched it and I was like, it makes it look like you just really don't give a shit. And I'm like, oh, so, come on. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. So, so Lipstick Assassin is none other than um, Heidi in Closet, who comes out and as soon as she starts lip syncing and her wig starts wobbling, I was like, it's uh, oh, before she rap. started lip syncing, when she walked down the runway, I saw it bobbling and I said, this girl's thing is going to fall off. I knew it right away. This is not a performance look. No, 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 no. This is like a runway look where you don't move and you like stand. And then as soon as it bobbled off, I'm like, you lost, go home. <laughs> yeah, she, she tried to be cute with it. She was like walking, she was gonna like pop it off or something, but she she just no. moved and it fell Messy. off. She, tried, she tried to catch it. I was like, Mary, this juice was not worth the squeeze. Ginger does a very good job on the lip sync. She did a good yeah. job. Ginger Minj has now, if I believe I'm correct, she won she won the uh, fifty thousand dollars so far. No, 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 even more. Listen to this. She won the reading challenge, five thousand dollars. She won the, the, the challenge. main challenge that was three thousand dollars. She won uh -huh. two lip syncs that were each twenty. This bitch has not won fifty eight thousand. No, it was thirty. The first one was thirty because oh, 30. it rolled over to two yeah. rice. Yeah, so she's 50, won fifty seven thousand dollars. I think I think fifty eight thousand dollars. <laughs> That's amazing. Now, ask me, Ask me how much the Vivian won for winning all of season one of Drag Race UK. Because the answer is zero Wasn't it 5,000? No. Oh, you win the chance to have your zero. own show. No, you win, you win a, a WoW Presents Plus um, show. Like, yeah. Which I didn't so you watch. get to work more, more as a winning. Yeah. <laughs> BBC, your baby. Prize BBC. Is, your prize you know, is we're going to hand you this W2 form. You know, if I was Vivian, I would have just reached out to Tia Coffee's uncle who paid for Tia Coffee to be on the show. And I would have said, girl, hook me up, BBC, baby. <laughs> <laughs> we know that Tia Coffee paid her way onto that show. Come on. You, <laughs> Don't get me you started. Are, you are so <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> so who cast her? Ginger, who cast her? Nobody. Oh, my God. Ginger <laughs> Man is now tied with Trinity K. Bonet in the front running's position. At this point, I really just feel like, and 
I love her. She's my sister. But like at this point, Eureka has to be the next to go. There's like there's, she can't win. Eureka's too oh. far behind. She can't win. She can't win. All right. Thank you all for listening to us on stereo. We're gonna hop back over to the uh, to the um, Riverside now and wrap up. Thank you all so much for listening. Thursday and I do this every single week. We will see you all very very soon. Goodbye. <laughs>